My name is Tuang and I am a grade 11 student from St. Joseph's College School. Today, I'll be showing you a science experiment that will be about discovering the link between the size of a particle and the rate of its reaction using Alka-Seltzer tablets. Since these tablets are medicine, make sure to ask a trusted adult, a parent, a guardian before you can use them. For this experiment, you will need two glasses of water that are filled 8 ounces or 240 milliliters, an empty glass, a separate bowl of water that is 8 ounces or 240 milliliters filled, a stopwatch, three Alka-Seltzer tablets, a piece of paper, and a marker. Before we do the experiment, there are some preparations we need to do. Take your piece of paper and copy the chart you see on the screen. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Now open the Alka-Seltzer packages and get three tablets. Keep one the way it is, and take the second tablet and break it into eight pieces. Finally, take the third tablet and grind it into a powder using a mortar and pestle or by crushing it in a bag. Part one of the experiment, using one whole Alka-Seltzer tablet. Have your stopwatch ready and place one glass of water in front of you. Then take one Alka-Seltzer tablet and drop it into the water. If this gets too hard for you, you could always ask for help. Make sure to start your timer the moment you place a tablet in the water. As soon as you think there are no more bubbles forming, stop your timer and record the time it took for the tablet to dissolve. And don't forget, make sure to not drink any water from the experiment. Part 2 Breaking an alka seltzer tablet into eight pieces. Repeat the same steps in part one and drop the eight pieces of alka seltzer into the glass. Start your stopwatch, and once you don't see any more bubbles forming, stop your stopwatch. Record your results in your table. Part three, grinding an alka seltzer tablet into powder. In this step, take an empty glass and place your alka seltzer powder inside. Once you are done, start your stopwatch as soon as you pour water inside your glass. Make sure to pay extra attention to the time it takes for the powder to dissolve. Then stop your stopwatch as soon as you see no more bubbles forming and record your results in your table. After completing the experiment, what thoughts went through your mind when you were looking at your results? For example, were you surprised how the powder formed in the tablet dissolved the quickest? Well, before we go any further, we need to know how an Alka-Seltzer tablet actually works. When an Alka-Seltzer tablet is placed in water, it starts to dissolve and form bubbles. This is called a chemical reaction. A chemical reaction is a process by which one or more substances are rearranged to form different substances. In order for a chemical reaction to occur, particles must collide with enough energy. Some examples of signals that a chemical reaction took place are gases forming or changing color. In every chemical reaction, there are reactants and products. The reactants are the starting chemicals in the reaction, and the products are the chemicals that are formed after the reaction. In our experiment, the reactants sodium bicarbonate and citric acid are combined to produce water and carbon dioxide. Let's go back to the topic of the Alka-Seltzer tablet's rate of reaction. The reason why the powder form of the tablet was able to dissolve faster was due to the increase in surface area. Surface area is the sum of all the faces on the three-dimensional shape. By decreasing the size of a reactant, the surface area will increase, raising the chances of particles colliding with each other, making the rate of reaction faster. Think of it this way. Here is a cube where each side length is 2 cm. To find out the total surface area of this cube, you must figure out the area of one face and multiply it by 6 because each side on this cube is equal. The area of one face on the cube is 4 cm square. That means the total surface area of this cube is 24 cm square. You can do this calculation by multiplying the length and width of one side of the cube and multiply it by 6. Now let's cut that same cube into 8 smaller cubes. Now each side length of the small cube is 1 cm, which means the area of a face on the small cube is 1 cm square. 
The total surface area would then be 6 cm square. Since there are 8 small cubes, you can multiply 6 cm square by 8. This comes to an answer of 48 cm square. As you can see, the surface area of the cube cut into 8 smaller cubes is more than the surface area of the cube in the original size. The 8 smaller cubes allow more access for reactions to take place. Let's take a look at the table we filled along the experiment. Don't worry if your results don't match with my results in the table. As long as you are in a close range, you should be alright. As you can see, the powder form of the Alka-Seltzer tablet had the fastest rate of reaction. This is because we broke the tablet into smaller particles, increasing the surface area. In conclusion, the smaller the particle size is, the faster its rate of reaction will be. And now you finally know the link between the size of a particle and the rate of its reaction. If you would like to see more content, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Global Science. If you upload your science experiments online, you can tag us as well. See you next time!